Hey everybody, welcome to the secret history to living in your aquarium. How is everybody doing this fine and wonderful, lovely, dandy day? <sighs> I'm doing good. Just went to the dentist and had some dentures fitted for my lowers. So that was cool. I'm going to have teeth again. Fun. Uh, what's up, Arya? And uh, on uh, Tran? What's up? Aqua balls. What's up, George? How's it going? So we'll wait for people to filter in. But my thought was before we start thinking of things to look at under the microscope, uh, if you guys have other questions, we can get to those. If you want to look at anything in the fish menagerie, you can ask me and we can do that. So let me know by doing at secret history living in your aquarium and we'll get that sorted. But I was thinking before we actually jump into any of that, why don't I go gather, uh, get a mason jar. Why don't I get a mason jar and why don't we gather um, some water from the tubs that are outside? Because uh, the tubs that are outside have been out there for eight, nine months now. And so they probably have some crazy life blown into them from being outdoors so why don't we get a turkey baster and a jar and a flashlight and we'll go outside and do that real quick and then we'll come back in and then if you guys want to see like crystal clear like a tank tank water that looks like it is clear as clear can be versus uh panic water versus uh say um i don't know a tank full of plants or some mold We'll look at it or whatnot. If we find any um, any fish that have passed away, uh, we'll look at those. If we want to see baby shrimp, we'll look at those. I'm down for whatever you guys you guys are steering uh, this show this evening. So let me grab. Where did I put that turkey baster? Oh, you guys don't want to know. Um, let's see. Oh, what a mess it is in here. All right. So we're on a mission. We're on a mission from God. Uh, all right, so let's let's go on this mission. We're missioning everybody. Um, I'm gonna. You might lose me for a sec because I'm gonna switch to uh, to a mobile phone network because I'll lose wireless outside in the yard, and then we're gonna go get the the critters, the the creepy crawlies. We'll just put them all in one since there's a few different tubs and we could sample one but hopefully i can just show you the tubs and we'll just i'll just try to get a selection of junk from the bottom of each tub we'll see what, how it goes uh and then if i lose you at all i'll be right back obviously um whenever whenever it picks back up but it might just going on and off the network might make a blip so let's go gather while you go gather so you guys talk in the chat amongst yourselves it's good to see everybody and I will go get that stuff, and you guys can come join me as long as there's service out there. Do, do, do. All right, we'll turn it around. So that y'all can see. I mean, it's it is. Oh, and I put my breaker bar in the door, so that just not helping anything. So I already gathered a few jars right here, and they've been sitting there though for about a week or two. I was taking photos of little critters and trying to identify them, learn them, so that when I come out here and do these kind of things on a live stream, I don't look like an idiot. Well, I look like less of an idiot. So let's take a look here. We've got this uh, wild biotope tank. It might not be much to see while I collect because I'm just gonna try to get whatever I can. And hope for the best. But boy, there are a lot of here, let me show you guys. There are a lot of little creepy crawlies in here, in these leaves that have been in here for nine months. You guys can, there you go. 
now you can see the sides and you can see all the little critters that are in there and all the aufuks or that that uh that protein film that's on the sides i'm going to scrape some of that and get that in the bottle Then we've got, ooh, sorry guys, just looking around. Then we've got Bucket of Stuff, which still has snails in it. Still has snails, there we go, this should be better. But I think this is, I think this is Planaria uh, right here, or not Planaria, but uh, Paramecium. See that cloud that's in there? I think that's Paramecium. And I think just getting a few samples of this and kicking up the, the moss a little bit we'll get some interesting stuff to look at there um over here let's see what else do we have we've got the madaka rice fish tonight it's actually sleeting and that's caused finally some of these plants to turn black and die but what we do also have in here tonight uh let's see where he is there are a few madaka rice fish still out here that are kind of just my experimental rice fish. You know, everyone's got to, ex oh my gosh, that's cold water to put my hands in. Oh my goodness gracious. Great cubes of ice. Oh, that's cold. Uh, and this is the uh, least killies. They don't do well in the cold. So, you know, they live, they'll live in this cold weather. They don't do super well though. So what I've noticed is I need to leave them in the substrate doing their own thing or even just disturbing their substrate seems to straight up kill them. So let's let's not straight up kill them. I may be a murderer, but I'm not a straight up murderer. All right. So we got a good selection of stuff that smells terrible. And we've got some jars of it here, too, which we'll leave there since they're already doing their thing out here. But we can come back and get them if we're not satisfied with what we find. They're from the same source. Look at this. We are nine months into living at this house, ten months into living at this house, and we still have boxes. Boxes and boxes on boxes and boxes. Uh, all right, boy, that's some nasty looking water. As far as yeah, it don't smell so hot either. We'll take a look at it in a minute, though. All right, let me wash my hand because I don't want to cross contaminate my tanks with uh, you know, paramecium or anything that's not even just paramecium. I mean, honestly, anything that's in there. So, what I usually do before I get into the tanks uh, heavily on a given day is I'll use some rubbing alcohol. Let me get both hands. Sorry, guys. It's just not going to work. You guys are going to have to be sat down for a minute. Drink it. Why? Uh, yada. All right. I'm switching back over to Wi-Fi in a sec here because we're back inside. All right. So you guys can lovingly from here while I get the rubbing alcohol on both hands and attempt to pass out from the fumes or not pass out. That's what we're going to do. Not pass out. They're going to attempt to not pass out. All right. Dry, 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 dry. All right, guys. Let's get to it. By the way, Christmas time, Christmas time. All right. So, oh, and we also have this. So this is water from out in the ponds that has been at room temperature. And I can see that there's little buggers swimming around in this. Let's try to get a focus on this, too, while we're when we're down here. So. We've got lots of containers to choose from later. We've got uh, our shrimp tanks. They tend to have the bigger stuff because 
the shrimp just simply don't eat the big stuff. You know, fish eat the big stuff usually. And then we've got a betta hatch out tank. We've got more fry tanks where lots of other little scuds and things exist. We've got a community tank. We've got a non-heated tank. We've got a really hot ram tank and a pisto tank. We've got the Turkana, the hard water tanks. We've got the biotope uh, tank. Uh, we have a, just has an air stone in it right now, but this tank right here is, uh, is completely covered and no real water movement. And then we have this one, which is covered in mulm and algae because I put rift lake cichlids. Well, actually, these are Lake Victorian, so not technically rift lakes. But I put a bunch of cichlids in here with plants, and that never, ever, ever works. But they do have some moldy food in here from yesterday that I just noticed when I was cleaning through the algae. And we could look at what fungi blooms look like under under the microscope, too. So. This microscope, I have to thank a, uh, uh, a viewer from years ago, and uh, they were awesome, and I want to thank them and their mother, who was a middle school science teacher, and we want to thank them for uh, what they did by giving us this, and I only had to spend probably 50 dollars on on a lens piece uh another 120 on the light and on all the slide stuff so i mean it saved me probably 200 dollars. so i really do appreciate it even though i don't think he watches the channel anymore i think he's even out of the country actually so i think he's in thailand but let's get this rocking anna rolling real and anna rocking alex what are you doing so basically, this is the little device that holds it onto the um, this holds it onto the microscope. And so now we have to line it up. There we go. And then we have to get it to stay lined up by tightening all these little levers. And then I'll check out the chat and see what y'all are saying. All right. So we're probably pretty good to go there. And all right. So. How is everybody, by the way? Happy holidays and uh, very merry, Harry Berry, Cherry, Cherry Christmas. Uh, we have a member I saw, Jeffrey Cunningham, new member. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I really do appreciate the memberships. That is awesome. You know, if you're not a super chatter or if you just want to have a way to, to say, hey, Alex, you're good. You're good to go. You're funded for the next month. Uh, then it's always super helpful. I'm just taking some rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide, uh, cleaning off the, the lenses and the slides. And then we'll get a little pipette. And we'll start off first, probably. Let's see. Here. It's just one of the many. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> you can see the pain in that cold water. Yeah, that water outside was about 32 degrees, probably, like forming ice around the edge. Um, all right, let's see here. What's going on, Eve? Harry Woodsman, Kelly D, Peplin Creek, uh, Kelly Huff, uh, Aqua Garden Zen, Craig, uh, T Bone, what's going on, buddy? Uh, Ricky De Hoyos, Jay Oliver. Mr. Guppy Man, what's up? Uh, Geek Boy, and who else do we have in here? I Hate Stupid People's Tank Tribe, right on. Uh, John, uh, John the Fish, oh, John the Fisherman. I was like the fishmonger. Uh, welcome, John the Fisherman. Uh, Audra Meyer, what's going on? Zana Dudu. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, S, what's going on, everybody? All right, Thomas L. Seidman, what up? Vizine, hello, new local Austin. All right, we got lots of folks rolling in now. Well, I better give you something to look at. Let's give them something to look at. All right, let me take a sample. Let's start off with the exciting junk, okay? So I'm going to take a sample here of what we just pulled out of the aquarium outside uh or or the tubs outside rather 
Um, we're going to take a look at that. And then we'll take a look at, let's see here. I'm trying to, trying to get some of the debris in there. And we'll look at uh, increasingly less, largely biodiverse anyways. Like the, the biodiversity, I mean, out and outside, you could get anything from tardigrades to, um, you know, tardigrades to stentors to uh, amoebas to lots of paramecium type things. Uh, lots of little crustaceans, micro crustaceans. So, all right. So we got a couple drops now that we can work with. So let's see what, let's see what we can see. We'll start off. We're at right now we're at 10 times magnification. And let's see here. I feel like if we turn the camera, it'll, Let's see if it flips it. There we go. Does that does that better for y'all? Is this going to be better if I can get this to stay? Let me set up a tripod if that is better. It's better for me. It makes it double the size. So I don't really care about y'all. I'll make it bigger for me if no one else. All right. No slide cover. Nope. I'm not doing slide covers tonight. We're rolling quick. Um. But yeah, no slide covers tonight because we're going to be checking the depths for different things, basically. Um, and there'll be different critters at different depths. And I like to not smush them. All right. So this is Mulm. So exciting. Um, you don't see always a ton when you just straight up put something on there but what we can see already uh is that the algae over there on the far right that green stuff that's algae and algae has cell walls generally unless it's if it's a singular uh algae like a planktonic algae then it can look different but if it is an algae that is um that is uh, like strand algae or hair algae, it will have these boxcar shapes on it. And so we'll see it there. You know, the ironic thing that people look at, and I always want to show them this, is so I got all the mulm I could in these. Like this is just big old globs of mulm. And yes, there are, like those are shrimp poop right there. That's how big we are at the microscope. Uh, level a microscopic level here and we can get under different light and kind of see there's some other little life forms that are real small single cell stuff if we zoom in here we're zoomed in now 40 times and let's see what we can see anything at 40 times zoom what amazes me though is how often when you go down into the mulm it's not, it's not dirty like you would think. It's not full of little creatures. It's right above that, and it's and it's live leaves and things, not the dirty brown mush that is full of things. I mean, there's lots of bacteria and fungi breaking things down. And there we can see we got the first little single cell organism cruising by, probably some little protist of some sort. Um, let's see, there'll, there'll be more, I'm sure. They don't like the, uh, light on them. And so they are prone to zipping past when, when the light starts heating them up and evaporating things a little bit. Now, no electron microscope. <laughs> uh, if you would like to help me raise money for electron microscope or a GSCM, I would, uh, absolutely love it. We could do uh, gas chronometry, mass spectro gas spectrometry, mass. Um, I can never say it. Gas chronometry, mass spectrometer. If you could hook me up with one of those, that would be pretty cool. Also, in other news, we have uh, Dr. Mazarol, Anthony Mazarol, uh, is going to be back in the next week, probably. 
And we're going to set up a time. It may not be during the normal show time, but we're going to set up a time where we're going to do a necropsy on a tilapia. And we're going to learn how to properly dissect a fish to look at what killed it. And he's going to walk us through that live. So that should be fun too. And that's something that I promised you guys six months ago and hadn't found a, a, an ichthyologist or biologist that was qualified to speak on fish and wanted to come on. And uh, because I'm work, doing work for his foundation, I, I kind of lucked out and, and won there. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at just empty cells. This is the empty cells of plants. See those long square cells? They're either dead algae or dead plant cells. And the mulm is all made from either leaves or um, algae, but it's just basically mush. It's It doesn't have any protoplasm in it anymore. Most of the vitamins are gone, but we do still have little critters like bacteria and things that are, that are hosted on it, that will live on it. So, you know, I think we should actually take a sample from somewhere else because this isn't that interesting of a sample. I thought maybe the mom would be the best sample, but I think I've been mistaken. So let's sw swap this out. I thought, you know, oh, that if you drink from a muddy water, that's probably where you're going to get sick. Now, I'm not saying that you wouldn't get sick from the water with that mulm there, but I'm just pointing out that it doesn't always, it's not what you expect that's filled with little critters always. Sometimes it's its the places you least expect that will be filled with little critters. So we're going to the next jar, which has been sitting in the room for a while. And so it's had a chance to uh, kind of gather up any cysts or things that would hatch in it. And so we'll look at that next. And almost set up. Trying to do this quickly, guys. Sorry. Sorry for the delay. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. So now we're looking at... Wawa that looks completely clear to the human eye and it is full of things swimming around and this is at 10 times magnification look at all those things swimming around in fact i'm tempted to feed that to my babies to my baby fish i wish i just knew that it wasn't you know oh got laced with some sort of terrible worm or nematode but I guess we can take a look and I could culture it. So we're going to zoom in different levels of this and we're going to go straight to a hundred times zoom or magnification, I guess is probably what I should say. And it'll take a sec to dial it in because it's clear water, as I said. So we'll have to find a moving critter to zoom in up oh, or the edge of the puddle sometimes works. Hold on. All right. So. And I haven't used any contrast dye yet. We might try some of that. So. Where are all the little creatures that were cruising around all over the place for us a minute ago? So what you're looking at here, these little dots, when they have a perfect margin like this, they're usually little cysts. If they're not moving, they're either dead single cell organisms or they're eggs, they're cysts. And uh, they're just kind of interesting to me because they're, they're in the water floating freely. Hey, T-Bone, thank you so much for the super sticker, brother. I appreciate you, sir. Um, all right, let's see here. Come on. Well, Mary says we need a lot more likes in here, but I don't know if we do yet because I haven't shown you anything incredible yet. 
because without the slide covers, they are prone to diving. So, okay, here we go. Here Now we're at a level where if we sit still, we'll see little blurs come in and out, and then we might be able to pick a, a spot to go select. You know, or what we could do is we could put some food, and we could actually, I could set aside some of the slides, and we could set out food for them so that they would come in and feed off of the food, and then we'd have a spot to, to watch. Uh, because it's hard without a grain of anything to focus on, it's hard. Because we're looking literally at single cell organisms here. And these ones look dead. Um, if not, they could just also be shocked right now under the microscope light. But we can see here that there's two right, right center. Uh, I don't know what they are off the top of my head. And don't ask me the species. Uh, oh, here we, here we go. Here's something. I see eggs or something going on. Where'd it go? All right. All right. Bear with me now. We're getting there. There we go. All right. Ta-da. Love these guys. With the, I'll stop touching the microscope so it won't vibrate. All right. So we love these guys with the little flagellas. So this is in crystal clear water. I can barely, 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 and I'll show it to you, even see the dust that makes up these little specks in the water. Yet we've got at least three life forms in here. You can see the big uh, egg-like one right in the dead center. He's doing something. She. Then we got the little race cars zooming by that are um, large. With They have big flagellas meaning they've got the hairs on them that let them swim. Uh, and then down below, the smaller guys, these little teeny guys, usually they're so small that they don't need to use, uh, I mean, they don't need to use much energy to move through the water. They don't have hardly any resistance. They're down at that teeny tiny level. Oh, I just saw a stenter up at the top making an appearance. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. Well, we'll see what it is, but it's eating those little things. We'll wait and see if it makes an appearance. If not, we'll shift it down in just a sec. Let's okay. Let's see what's going on here. What is this thing doing? It's caught on some algae or something. And it's, you can see how strong it is uh, in the, and you can actually see that in its stomach, those little, those little brown guys that are swirling around in circles, they're actually in its stomach too. If you take a look at it here, I'll stop moving again, but look at that. And it's got a mouth, a very clear mouth and graspers. I don't know if you guys can make that out on the live stream, but it's a circle it's kind of shaped like a circle with a mouth and it must have a, it must have a tail like a little sperm would uh, because it's caught up on that stuff. And I see that its body's not touching that mulm that it's caught on. Um, so, yeah, but in any case, we can see that the little whirly gig guys are in the fresh water too. And let's try to find some of the bigger stuff uh, that was zooming by a second ago. This is all in an eye, like an eyedropper of water. So, and again, this is from the outside tank, but it's warmed up. So whatever was in there hatched. There we go. There's some paramecium looking good for us with all the little whirly gigs or, um, and it looks like some cysts too. Also, I see that we have a nematode. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in between uh, the 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 two the two um, darkest spots on the lower part of the screen. There is a little clear worm with its head poking out above the two dots, and its body wrapped around the lower brown spot. Um. And it is, I don't know if it's eating whatever those are or what, but I'm not getting much clearer. Let's try, you know, the fine focus. Not getting a whole lot of a clearer picture on them, no matter what I'm doing here. So 
they might just be a little clear organism. But I think it's interesting how the other guys, you got the little uh, single cell life forms and then you got like bigger paramecium and they all kind of move differently. But the ones that can just twist on their axis and move like forward or backwards to me are the, are the really cool ones. There's all sorts of different locomotion in this. Um, so let's, let's, okay. I think we, we see what's in this little puddle. Let's take a look at the next little eyedropper of water that I put on this slide. And we're going to start zoomed out again. And here we have, again, just smuts stuff from the bottom of the, the tub. And to the naked eye, I see nothing, literally nothing in here. But, ta-da, once you have warmer waters, yes, there's stuff alive in cool water. But when you get warm water, tropical level waters, the life goes up exponentially. Now, we may have a stenter here. I don't know. We'll see if it moves, if this is just a cell or some part of a leaf or something, or if we have a life form. It may just be a leaf, I think. But we're now back to 40 times zoom. We're going to go up to 100 again and just cut to the chase. See what we can see. See if we see any organelles or anything. Um... I don't see any organelles. This looks like a piece of plant that's deteriorated, like maybe a little tip of a leaf. But we're going to leave it here for a sec just to see what else are cruising by. I could be wrong. I mean, it could spring to life, but I'm pretty sure it's just something else. But it's sure got small cells if it does. And anybody who knows what's going on on the screen more than me, which is probably a lot of people, please feel free to chime in. Any of you uh, biologists in the, in the building, feel free. Or feel free to bark at in directions. So I wanted to just show you guys like some basic – this looks like clear water, and it's not. There is all sorts of little life forms. Let's try 400 times magnification. We'll see. Usually this one doesn't work so swell with the phone, or with uh, the attachment to the phone, rather. And as per usual, it's not working. Okay. That's a bummer. I do need to get a new lens. It's got problem for some reason. All right, so let's look at the last little drop I put on here. There was something in it. There's something that looks like a feather in it that's teeny. so hard to move it without shifting the entire everything hold on i don't have a stage mover which is bummer i have to actually move, move the slide with my finger i wish i could move the stage smoothly if i wish i had a microscope where that moved on me all right so oh where is that thing? I guess it's just uh it's just stuff in the water. It's not anything on its own substantial. I thought it was gonna be a leaf or something, but it's not. It's just it's just a debris field um that I saw. All right, let's double check. We'll, we'll double back over here. Again, this is a different depth of water. You can get the little um, microscopes pretty cheap. Now, that looks interesting. 
That is very interesting right there. I don't know what that is. But it it sure has some detail to it. Or did before I screwed it up. Um, you can get the microscopes that hook up to your phone for like 30 or 40 bucks. Now, really, they only work about 10 times zoom and they're shaky as all get out. And there's some other issues with them, too. If you spend around two hundred dollars, you can get a decent one. But I'm going to get off this microscope zoom thing. I'm going to get off this zoom call, guys, just to talk to you to show you what the water looks like now that everyone's in here again. All right. So I'm undoing. I'm unscrewing, undoing. So hold, hold on. Bear with me. All you bears and lions and tigers. Oh, my. All right. Come on. Hey, guys, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Kelly D, appreciate it. Uh, all right. So what I wanted to show you guys is what we were just looking at. Let me pull it out here. So what we were just looking at is literally clear. Can you, well, let's try to, let's try to illuminate this a bit. But to the human eye, that was completely clear tank water. So all those little whirly gigs and critters were living in water that looks clear. So we're not talking about any of the stuff you can actually see with your naked eye. We're down to the level, because that's boring. I mean, I could show you guys a baby shrimp or something. It looks like a monster on here. I could show you guys that. But what we did was we took a sample from here, which was the outside sample. And in here was some mulm and some junk. And there are Daphnia that we could definitely look at um, in here. So we can look at those. Those are in the next size up. And same with in here. This is kind of a magical world of, well, let's see, where'd the flashlight go? This is a magical world of stuff. You guys can probably see the little white critters darting around. So that's mostly Daphnia. And uh, the other stuff would qualify as uh, Infusoria. But what I want to show you um, is that we picked up the mulmier stuff that was in here, the mulmiest mulm in that corner, the substrate from outside, and we didn't see much of anything other than clots of dirt and some really teeny life forms. But in this clear water, a.k.a. not clear water when you get a really strong LED up to it, look at that. That's what we were seeing was these life forms. Now, those life forms you can see moving around, we didn't see any of those because they would have been the entire screen, even at the lowest setting. But why don't we try to get some of those? Or you guys tell me which tank you guys want to see something from. And we'll take a sample from that. Whichever you want, we'll do. I got a whole box of slides fresh here that I bought the other day. And uh, I think they were like 20 bucks for like 50. So it was a pretty good deal for good quality slides. I didn't get slip covers because they just annoy me when I'm looking for critters, as I said. Um, you know what I think we might do if nobody shouts out, oh, the tank with the most plants. Okay, Aquaman, that's a great contrasting idea. Let's do that. Let's go get some water from a tank with the most plants. Now, do you want the most diverse plants or just the most plant material? Because the most plant material is probably this tank right here. That tank is real full with plants. Um, whereas this one is pretty diverse and very full. So do we have a preference? ADHD, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it, my dear. 
show the Formosa. Um, I could def I mean, I can show you a, a header and a Formosa right here. They're just chilling in their tank. Uh, where are they? I say that, and then there's none to be found. Here, let me scare some. So there's some CPDs. There's a header and a Formosa right there. So these guys are way too big to look at under the microscope, unless you want to look at their scales and stuff. But I'm not going to do that unless we have a dead one. However, shrimp are a different story. I don't mind killing one of the Maloa shrimp. I do have a million of them. Um, the other thing that I was kind of curious to check out was this tank, which is where all the little baby... Um, where are they all? Oh, they're up there. Uh, where all the little baby... Uh, uh, fish from the Turkana jewel cichlids have been hanging out and they've been feeding off this wall these dirty dirty walls and there there's, looks like cyanobacteria and stuff so I'm kind of um, I'm kind of curious but let's do the planet tank first and then we'll come back and we're going to see what these little fish are eating off the side of the walls because they just sit there all day and pick at the walls so we'll see and I haven't purposefully put any cultures in that tank. It's just whatever appeared in the tank. Um, and then, for good measure, after we do that one, why don't we also take a look at the tannic and or most acidic tank to contrast how sterile those can be. I just happen to know, usually from experience, these tanks tend to have the least amount of life forms because of the acidity. Now they'll have algae and, and particles, but they may not have life forms. Now let's go down into this tank and we'll see what we can see. We're going to take the pipette. Let me roll my sleeves up. Sorry, guys. I know the, the, the it's bouncy tonight. But we're going to kick up some mom. Kick out the mom, mother trucker. All right. There's a good sample of puffed up mom from the bottom of a very planted tank you know see the fish are actually eating whatever it was i kicked up let's see what they're picking at all right let me hook you guys back up Ugh. and this is the rig we're using by the way i mean i got a bunch of electrical cords and extensions because of the uh the various lights and LEDs that it takes to illuminate the stage. You can't just use the one it came with, with the camera. It, it doesn't like that. Look at all of the beautiful duckweed bracelets I have. All right. Okay. All righty. Slide number two. Slip slide and away. Slip side and away. Hold on, guys. All right. Zoom back out. Oh, look at the mom. For mommy's sake. What is living in there? Anything? Oh, yeah, I'm sure we got some things. Oh, I see some little whirly McGigs. Let's take another. Let's 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 zoom around a little bit. Let's look at this deeper puddle I put on here. There we go. There's a stencher. Look at that. Look at that bad boy right there. Hanging out. Dead center is the stencher. And all those little broken square pieces are either plant cells. Usually they'll be translucent, though. So then they're castings from shrimp and snails and fish. And that's what's making up your mold. Um, so we're looking for any big critters. And look at yet again, it looks like we've got one stuck on a piece of algae or something. So let's do it. Let's see what's giving this guy a bad day. Uh, 
I have to move it slightly. Let's see. Hey, maybe we'll discover a new life form, everybody. You guys can name it. So we have another little life form right here. And this is, I can't remember the name of their group, but it's one of those foot life forms. And it just holds on. And it's already held onto the glass. And it's just going to hold on there and then pull itself long like an inchworm very slowly. But they're not very interesting to watch unless you have a time lapse. So we're going to keep cruising here. What do we have here? So we have more mulm. In, in a planted tank, you have really quite a stable system. I mean, honestly, it's it's a very healthy system. I wish we weren't in, uh, if, if we were not in StreamYard, I could zoom in on my phone too, which would give us another 50% at least zoom. Now there's some black hair algae. As we go deeper into the puddle, we'll see some more life forms, and I'll stop moving. That's just the vibrations from my my voice and my hand turning the knob. So it's very sensitive when you get a little drop, obviously. So when we were down this small, we were seeing little whirly gigs and stuff. Where'd they all go? Are they higher up in the water? They lower. Maybe, maybe they've all left the building. I think we might need to look at something for the sake of a stream that doesn't bore you all to death. Oh, there's some more life. There go. There it goes. It's just running away from me. As as per usual. Not even microscopic life wants to hang out. You got another stenter. Just chilling. Like a little villain. At a hundredfold magnification. Here we go. Here's some little... Uh... Where'd they go? Come back. It's a rare breed. Sweet. I don't know much about stenters other than, you know, they're a group that has specific tribute uh, characteristics. And they kind of look like a big old fungal or <laughs> funnel or triangle. So here you got little microorganisms cruising by still. Just doing the thing. Just just or or organisming. And uh this was from the mulm of the very planted tank. So again, here, these are little cysts or seeds. These little cells that don't move that are like perfectly round and you can see the margins on them really well. They're usually they could be spores. But they're usually uh, they're usually little seeds or or cells, and or, or rather cysts. So like brine shrimp have cysts. Those two little circles up towards the top, right? Well, now they're gone. Um, are probably something that was in the substrate dormant, and it will hatch in several months, type of thing. All right, let's look through some more of this, and then we'll load up. I'm gonna speak to friends. It's always fun for everyone. Hello, 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 hello. All right. Let's take a look at what's cruising around this little puddle. Anything? Man, I wish we could go to the 400 times magnification on a live stream. I feel like I'm just teasing you guys by not having it working.
<laughs> Why aren't you here if you haven't liked this? Interesting. Um, interesting point you've got there. So now that the the light bulb has heated up this water like to probably 90 degrees, sometimes you'll get a panic over the light slide, like over the, the slide that's touching the light bulb uh, glass window because they are like, what's changing? Why is it happening? And sometimes they'll all run. See, there's another perfectly round something, and that is either a seed spore or cyst usually, like I was saying before. Um, let's look at a piece of duckweed. Why not? Why not? Find the smallest piece of duckweed I can find. Boom. Those are the individual cells on a duckweed plant. So you can see the margin of the cell walls. And uh, that's kind of cool. Let's see if there's anything else going on on this duckweed. You can see the veins, which are hollow. That's the crease right there where the leaves part. And that's going to be where all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals flow. And then if you look really closely on the surface, usually you can see them. It's almost like shark skin, but there's this texture that kind of repels water. And there's these little teeny tiny hairs also on the surface that look like a cat tongue if you get even more zoomed in. I'm just trying to see if we can see the edge of them at all at a certain angle. So again, this is a hundred times zoom. Let's go, let's kick it back down to, all right, so this is 10 times zoom. And yet you can still see the individual cells on the duckweed. So you can still kind of see those little chambers. And the reason they are called cells, can anybody guess why? Um, find a hydra. I hopefully I don't have any hydra, but if we have some, we'll find them. Um, so we're gonna zoom in again. I'm gonna ask the question again. Why are cells, plants, and animals called cells? Well, when monks were studying these in the first Cells. Some of the cells out there in certain species are actually big enough that you can uh, make out the nucleus and everything. Sometimes you need contrast dye. These are actually very small cells because this is a very small plant. Let me get some Valsinaria and show you uh, that. Um, yes, thank you, Thomas Hines. Cell walls are made up of a polylipid that are hydrophobic, yes. And that means they push away water, in short. And that's what you can see. See the water uh, forming up on each cell? There's actually water uh, kind of condensing on each one, um, which is kind of cool. So let me, let me get something a little more interesting. Or a cell that we can see through better, rather. So, hold on, guys. I figured changing out the slide without just leaving it open frame might be better. Because then you're not, like, bouncing all over the, the screen with the view. All right, hold on. Let me grab something real quick. need to grab a little scissor. Got it. And we'll get some other plants.
All right, guys, I haven't forgotten about you. All right, so we're going to put some moss on here that has blackbeard algae, and we're also going to put some val, some jungle val. Actually, no, it's sig, sig, uh, it is, uh, all right, so now take a look at these cells. Now, there's a cell wall for you guys. Perfect little boxes. That's how you tell the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell. Animal cells are gooey. They have membranes, and they move around in in their position. Um, they can open, and they can move legs and things. Whereas plant cells are little box cars, and they do differentiate. Like the veins and things may um, create a pathway. But they're basically, it's like basically building everything out of Legos still. So on the edge of this, you can actually see the chlorophyll coming out, the green, where I cut it. And you can also see that the cut just smushed things. Now, what, what I want to show you guys again on here is, let's find one that, that's really obvious. I mean, the human eye can actually make out the cells on these. Look at them. There's some cells right there. And then there's the cell superstructures. But here we've got a grouping of cells. And where is the, the, the biggest cells on this thing? All right. So on the biggest ones, if we zoom in, we have to light up all the way, hopefully. We should be able to, yes. So you can see the chloroplast on the lower left. And you can even see a little reddish brown dot in one of the center cells. That's the nucleus. And that's where all the DNA is. That's why, I mean, well, that's how we would clone it. If we needed to, we would extract it from there. That's why I'm bummed that I can't zoom in 400 times for you guys to show you all of this. And we'd need dyes, actually. Methylene blue works okay, but really we'd want uh, some better dyes. Maybe I'll save up and get some. But the reason they call them cells is because when... Uh, what's his name? Mendel, Gregory Mendel, and other monks in Europe late middle ages early renaissance period we're studying these things under magnifying glasses and the earliest proto microscopes they thought they looked like the little chambers where they lived in a hallway full of cells just like a prison cell just like a monk's quarters were called his cell back then and that is why they're called cells which i think is kind of funky hold on let me balance this all off again there we go that's better all right so now let's look at the moss so moss is a simpler life form in evolutionarily evolutionary terms but let's take a look at the moss and it's going to look a lot more complex so here we are zoomed in all 100 fold and again you can see organelles in the in the cells you can see that red that might even be like the mitochondria of that cell which would produce the energy uh, so we can actually make out the cells and the pigment in these so let's and again you can see even smaller cells up above, differentiated cells. Let's zoom back out again like we were so you guys can see what we're even looking at. So this is one strand of moss. And on it is blackbeard algae. And the blackbeard algae are those little Oreos or stacked donuts or whatever you want to call them. That's what algae looks like. And almost any aquarium that you take a few samples from, 
in fact, I haven't ever found one that it, it was not the case. You will get those. You will get that happening. It's just part of life. Um, you may not see it blooming on the surface. It may not be that dense, but you will get cells of algae. I guarantee it. And again, now we're at the very, we're following the, the moss and the algae gets worse. And if we were to look at this uh, moss, just with the naked eye, it looks like completely healthy moss. Yet it has algae all over it. All right, let's look at, let me try to catch a Daphne out. Let's do something exciting. Hold on, I think I may have gotten some life form, but I don't know if it's a Daphne. Yeah, hold on. The Cyclops would work too. I'd be tickled pink if we could get a Cyclops on there. Hold on, guys. Bear with me. Promise it'll be worth it. Did I get him? I don't know. Hold on, let's. Let, I'll, I'll I'll give you guys a pool of water to look at from the same body again. See if tell me if anything floats by in the next few seconds while I try to catch this bugger. All right, I got him. I got him. Now we just have to get him on the slide. I'm going to use a fresh slide. All right. Oh, he's going to go crazy. He's not happy. And it looks like we have a Cyclops. Or Triclops. I don't know. We'll find out. Let me wait for him to get to the other side of the puddle, and then I'm going to take some of the water out so we can find him quicker. All right, there we go. Okay. Now we come to the star of this evening's show. Some complex life. What your fish would like to eat. Well, your baby fish will eat any of the stuff we've seen. But, where are you? There he goes. He's a little rocket man. We'll try to catch him, though. We'll, 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 I'll try to, hold on, let me try to get the, use like a something, a uh, toothpick to get him on his own little puddle. All right. It, it's a Cyclops. Copapod. Exactly. So, your fish love these. And if you've ever wondered what those little twitchy things are on your glass, half the time it's these. The little white dots that are barely perceivable by the human eye. Hey, calm down. I don't want you to die, dude, little dude. So just chill. Hold on. 
we're going to decrease his puddle size again. All right, he's the one swimming off in the no man's land here. Where'd he go? Is that him? Well, we saw him cruise by. Stay still, little dude, and I'll put you back. Now, we're not seeing a whole lot of other little life forms in here with him, which is interesting. There we go. See, they really don't like the light is the issue that's going on here. And I could have killed him and mounted him, but I didn't want it. There we go. Happy, happy Cyclops Day, everybody. Pretty cool. So let me get the water even lower. So we can try to catch a better glimpse of Mr. Copapod. All right. Now he's basically skimming the water, so we should be able to get him to stay in an area, but he might be flipping around when we find him. Here we go. There we are. Come on. Now he's like a fish on the beach. See, he really doesn't like the light. That's also why this is a 1980s microscope, and they still do their job just fine, which is great and all. But the heat and the light that they produce from having an incandescent bulb really uh, it does not please the little life forms. And so they spaz out, which does help you see them moving sometimes. Hey, we've got a couple of them in here. There's two in here. Yeah, there's only uh, 75 or so of us science-loving aqua nerds in here. Come on, stay in our slide. Slip slide in a way. You slip slide in a way. All right. Well, in any case, I'm going to pull this back out again because I need to sip Dr. Pepper. We're going to put this little copepod back in his tank, and I'll show you how, how very small this copepod is. You can't, we'll, we'll be able to make it out with my phone, but barely, and it'll need a strong light. We'll need a strong LED on it. All right. So pardon the mess here. But what were those copepods? They're those little white dots moving around in here. And for scale, um, let me put my my finger here. So little white dots, hand, little white dots. Can't see them, can't see them. Now you can see them. So these are them. And those are excellent food for your fish we should be so lucky now what we were looking at that were the little teeny round dots those were in this water and we're still seeing copepods and other things squirreling around um there's a daphnia right there i can tell because i can see it has two egg sacs which are like their wombs so to speak and then we've got another Cyclops because they move a lot smoother and straighter. They're like little jets. They move very 
quickly and in a straight line if they want to. But this is my little setup, just another little tripod. Then we add extra light with um, uh, it's it's called like um, a Duracell high powered um, 550 lumen LED uh, uh torch so it must be made for europe or something uh and then here the camera can be mounted and this thing was only like 15 or 20 bucks i should add it to the links i have below um and then this just pops out and then you can put back in this like so but this eyepiece was always trashed from the beginning um and yes, it does add to the magnification tenfold. Um, but you can also get that with the phone that I happen to have. So if you guys ever see me put out a video where you see good footage of little critters, now you know, I mean, we just spent an hour doing that, believe it or not. Now you know what kind of goes into uh into that process it's not just like a quick easy breezy process so i was gonna say let's look at stuff you know all night long kind of thing on the show but i kind of want to answer some troubleshooting questions if anybody has any um <laughs> yeah <laughs> kelly d this channel does have potential to be even more awesome it could get a better host and better content and you know, cooler aquariums. No. Um, I'll probably do some video that's not live because there's just so much setup to to all of this. Um, and we were only able to look at like four or five samples of different little water. So what do you guys does anybody need help with anything is anything going down of any interest that folks want to talk about while you submit any questions of what's going down i thought i'd mention that aquatic arts oh i have to show you this this is the coolest thing too um you guys will dig this aquatic arts has free shipping right now on any hardscape or food so all their different foods, Bacter AE, um, snowflakes, um, their wafers, or where? Oh, wait, it's over here. Hold on, guys. This place is a mess right now. I've been working on like five different projects back to back. All right. So the ones I dig the most are these pollen granules. And this is what bees eat. Or this is basically what they roll up and put into little containers for adult bees. The baby bees eat honey ex more exclusively, which is vomit of its saliva and enzymes mixed with this. But what I want to show you is how cool this would be if you had a nice, you know, HD camera to film this with. These are just mesmerizing. So watch. They'll go down to the bottom. And they'll leave a little trail, some of them. And then all of a sudden, they'll take off again as the surface area permits them to collect air like a little Mentos in a Coke bottle. Watch. And then they'll just shoot up to the top again. But when they fall, they look like little... Oh, uh, yeah, Lady Diane, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, one just shot up to the top, and now it's coming back down. Um, but, yeah, they're going to do that until the end of the year for the holidays. Um, but, I mean, just the fish love this stuff. The pollen is full of amino acids that have been, like, solidified into, like, basically a power bar. Oop, now the pollen's going back up. Look at it. Look at these beautiful little patterns it leaves. It's like smoke, but the pollen's going back up like, like uh, the elevator from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And 
again, it's just high in protein and nutrients and sugars and starches. Oh, here comes another one. Uh, and that's because the baby bees and the worker bees need energy. So this is the most evolutionarily effective way that they could pack energy into something, which also makes it irresistible to fish and shrimp. Little fish love it. Big fish um, will oftentimes just eat it on its own. Like they'll eat the whole piece. They don't go for the little cloud. But little tetras and rasboras, they'll go for the cloud. And then the nice thing about it is something about it chemically that I was reading. And look, the shrimp are fighting over it. Um, is that they don't actually uh, turn into ammonia in your in your tank because it's already been dried out as elemental uh, nutrients within a matrix of of basic the basic uh, proteins and uh, starches and a few lipids, I guess. They do seal it off with wax, but in any case, so yeah, then they all go shooting back up to the top and then they come back down and they look like a jellyfish and everybody scatters and fights over the pieces. But yeah, I mean, these things, I think they're like 13 or 15 bucks for this thing, which is just, I mean, I put four or five in just now and look at that. I mean, it's just filled with those. That's two ounces, I think. Yeah, because that's the one ounce there. Um, but yeah, I mean, just really a cool, a cool deal. Um, the other thing I want to show you guys. Um, you know, I'm not sure, Mick. That's a really good point because I've noticed that too. And, and I've noticed that aponic eatons of all sorts and a lot of cryptocorns do not get eaten no matter what. They just don't get touched. And I think it is the texture one because they both kind of have this leathery, hydrophobic texture, like Anubius. Because uh, Java ferns kind of the same way and Bulbitis too. I've never seen a fish eating bulbitis, not even goldfish. It's just too leathery. Um, and I don't think they like it. So, but what I wanted to show you guys is that we have the beautiful, beautiful red Aponegeaton Crispus. And the leaves are now tall enough that they can reach the surface. And that's always the cue for when it's going to flower with most Aponegeaton species but here we have the bloom and we have a brush so i can self-pollinate it if it's white i know that sounds cliche then it means it can self-pollinate if it's purple or blue it can't self-pollinate. Kind of an interesting trait. And then the other thing I like to do is what I'll, I'll go above it on a, a bar or I'll take a stick and I'll just flick onto it with the bristles. So that should pollinate it, hopefully. Hopefully that will take it to seed eventually and we'll be able to get seeds from that. So... And you can see even the the leader up to it is red. Um, but it's definitely trying to put the energy up into the flower. So I thought that was kind of cool. And that's something that's going on in the aquarium. Uh, this Under all this light, this red Twin Star SA series, the light's too intense for the tiger lilies. It makes them burn it actually puts holes in them so the ones that are not under the direct light look like a great tricolor lily but and they've got kind of a purple magenta color the ones that are right under the light they're full of holes 
They're not happy. They're burnt. So this red is too intense for them. So if we go back into the other room, and by the way, I got these October 10th, and they were not even half an inch long. Now these guys are well over an inch and a half, almost two inches long. They're like beta size. And these are those freaks, the uh, the parrot uh, convict polar blue cichlid. Um, hey, what's up, Jackson? How are you doing, buddy? I know. Um, yeah, so those are the, the polar blue. Uh, uh, they're, they're actually, what they are is they're um, Honduran red points with uh, parrot cichlid, blood parrot. And they're called polar blues or arctic blues. But... So I showed you that other plant. Well, here's the Fluval 3.0. So this would be considered medium light in my world of higher tech plants. Because I know some people just have lower tech plants. And, you know, you don't, you probably wouldn't call things. This highlight is different to different folks. But to me, this is more like a medium light. And this is the same species of lily. I took the cutting from it. And you can see it's actually far prettier more red and purple and auburn and orange it's it it does a better job when it's not getting completely blasted out by light so so yeah um and then the epistos in here they're still mean as all get out these guys are mean as all get out but i'm trying an experiment which is i put them in with the goodyids and they chase the goodyids I haven't seen them actually get a hold of one and bite yet. Everyone's tails and fins are fine. And then the pea puffers are still back there too. So we got pea puffers, red turcana jewel cichlids, Prankox neon rainbow uh, fish, and yeah, and the goodyids, split fin goodyids in here. And they're all getting along. I do not have any banana plants, unfortunately. Uh, but the these guys had their babies the the turcana jewel cichlids had their babies and they're just renowned for being mean so they're not allowed to be with their babies so i took them all out and their babies like i said they're feeding on all those copepods and little uh little guys that we saw under the microscope but the other nice thing about this pollen is it's still going so it's still a meal on the ground it's still is there any floating still yeah there's still some floating and so the shrimp will come and they'll surf the top like this. This is a low low to medium power light. This is the Higer, their expensive light, which I consider low to medium power. So it's all relative. I mean, I could be going with a cheap night crew like that one, which they claim is medium. And to me, it's nothing of the sort. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to show that. Oh, they're in their mating colors. So let's see if the males are too. So I just saw that the stiphodons are all colored up and the women are, the, the females are getting wide again. So they'll be spawning again. I just wish I had salt water for them. Yep. They're colored up. They've got green and blue. And uh, those are the cobalt ones. The serufus ones are uh, red when they color up and then again we've got that cool jamaican live bear the male with the gonopodium that can stretch all the way forward to his face to his chin marilyn manson style i suppose and his lovely lady who has metallic striping but no yellow or giant gonopodium uh what you doing dude focus the thing I hate about StreamYard is it doesn't let you tap on your own camera to focus. Or at least I haven't figured out how to do that, if so. Um, so in any case, that's going on. And then the other thing is every week we do an update on these guys. So I guess we'll do an update on these guys. So we've got CPDs galore in here. There's a good amount of them. Again, we're going to have trouble focusing, but you'll see them. You'll see that they're swimming. Um, 
If I wasn't using StreamYard, ironically, which I thought would be better for the microscope, it would be working out better. Uh, we'd be able to zoom in and take a look at things. And then we also have the plecos, the albino plecos that are chilling. And then we also have the quarries. So where are the quarries? Plus we have a bunch of pregnant um, mallowa shrimp too. Um, but the quarries, there's a quarry. So these are the Venezuelan quarries, the orange ones. And I didn't think any of them were doing well. When I looked at their eggs, they were kind of milky. And I threw them in here, and for five days, they just sat and nothing happened. There's another one up in these plants right here. And then there's probably another 30 baby quarries just cruising down in the substrate along with baby plecos. Um, so this baby hatching 10 gallon with no heat, no filtration, just plants and substrate is going pretty well. I've actually started to transfer them over to Aquarium Co-op Fry Food, which is just ground up salmon guts and stuff, which is great for them. Um, all right, let's see here. Let me flip this around. I feel like I've lost you all. I nearly, I nearly lost you and it's taken us so long. Um, there we are. Is that better or is this better? No, I think that's better. Okay, now you can see my Neanderthal self. All right, guys. Well, does nobody have any aquarium questions? We all doing okay? I mean, uh, I, I might have missed some because I'm on StreamYard and it's, terrible with questions and usually i have the computer running simultaneously but for several reasons tonight i've been a little preoccupied um but i do appreciate everyone coming out um so if you did have a question and i missed it drop it in the comments and i'll get to it because i try to answer everyone's comments every day if they're new comments sometimes if they're responses to an old comment I miss them and I just don't see them uh, and it's a pain because I never get alerted to them. Are you afraid of the dark? I was born. Wait, wait, what's that stupid quote that's going around everywhere from uh, something about the darkness? You were raised in the dark. I was born in it. Whatever that stupid it's on Instagram all the time. I'm trying to learn about the other the other platforms. And then there's like eight songs that I hear every video. I'm just an ordinary, everyday, average, <clears throat> and then some swear words. And then, man, if you guys are on Instagram, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the stuff that I select to watch. But, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, like I said, we're going to have uh, all announce it in our... Uh, in our um, do 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 do, probably the community tab and the Facebook group. But we're gonna do the necropsy, which is a actual ichthyologist, biologist, uh, and he call it uh, environmental scientist, uh, which is Anthony Maserol, and he's going to walk us through the anatomy, like what could have been killing your fish, where to look for parasites. Um, how to tell what's normal, what's not normal, that kind of stuff about organs and tissue and other stuff. Um, let's see here. Richard, I was wondering if microworms are okay as a long-term food for nanofish. Um, you know, any one food usually is not the best long-term. That's, that's what I've found. Now, like bloodworms and, um, and blackworms, one, they can have parasites, but two, uh, live ones, that is. But two, they actually cause fatty liver disease quite frequency, frequently, or like a cirrhosis. And so it's usually better, um, it's usually better to uh, just forget it and feed them maybe four days a week or even five, but switch it up with some, you know, um, 
something that has vegetative matter, something that has, uh, if you're feeding them high protein, give them something that's got like high lipid and, you know, um, sugar another day or something. Because even carnivores eat herbivores. So even a carnivore is getting its vegetables by eating the stomach of those other fish. Um, Thomas uh, Hogard, hello. Uh, is it worth treating uh, planaria in a planted fish shrimp tank uh, with pancure cubendazole or just let it be? Okay, so here's my opinion on that. If you are going to treat uh, planaria, I would I would treat planaria if you have if you have baby fish or baby shrimp that you need to survive like you're breeding them for profit I would I would kill them uh, if you have a lot now if you only have like say you only see five in 20 minutes and it's during feeding time then no just cut back on food a little bit and their population should die down but what happens is they reach a critical mass in some tanks and it's because of a lack of biodiversity. If there's no other copepods, daphnia, worms, nematodes, then those flatworms are going to come to life and they can take over and they can form these nests and they have this saliva goo stuff that's sticky and it traps the babies and then they'll come and their stomach's in the center of their body. It's not at their little triangular head and they'll come and they'll wrap around the sh baby shrimp and they'll start digesting it while it's alive. So let me show you what you should get. And I need to add this to the links in my description, but no planaria. This is from Japan. It was, I want to say 15 bucks, 12 bucks. 17 bucks something i don't remember for sure it lasts for five years expiration date wise and it will kill with one little spoonful which is i think an eighth of a teaspoon it will kill five gallons worth of planaria in the substrate completely dead i treated this tank down here and i didn't see anything happening for three days and so i i did double the dose it started to kill the shrimp by the fourth day. Fifth day, I started losing a good amount of shrimp, so I had to move some of the shrimp, but then it killed all the planaria, and they've never come back. Nothing's come back in that tank. I don't even see anything under the microscope in that tank. So it is a bit of a, mm, do I want to kill everything that is a flatworm, nematode, or snail that's in that tank? If you do, this is all natural. It's literally betel nut which is a drug which is used in southeast asia it's a bright red nut and they chew on it and it, it produces like a euphoric energy and calmness at the same time like a physical energy or wait mental energy physical calmness and uh pain resistance and so it's it's very popular to use it's kind of like kratom or cot in in africa um, but it will just straight up, even like one little granule will just, if you put it on planaria, like I experimented, it will shrivel up and turn inside out. It's like salt on slugs and it's like their natural worst enemy, but then you can never put, um, sensitive snails in there again. Um, and for that matter, sensitive shrimp, you gotta be a little careful. So literally dose it like it says wait the three days don't get impatient it's like you know like edibles that some people are like i don't feel anything it's been an hour so they eat two more cookies and two hours later their mind is melted and they're calling 911 because they think they're dead um let's see here are there any fish medicines that you recommend every fish keeper have and are there any medicines that become illegal in the future that you should obtain now levamisol is the one you should obtain now it's not illegal yet it can be distributed by pet um, wholesalers for farm stock. It's not supposed to be allowed for um, household pets like cats, dogs, and um, fish without a veterinary prescription, at least in Washington. But they still sell it. Like Aquarium Co-op sells it because Fritz makes it. So there's a good chance that could get banned. Now, the other thing that's getting banned more and more is erythromycron, or <laughs> not fish, erythromycin 
and also any any that basically any antibiotics because people are taking them themselves in the u.s far too often same with <laughs> metronidazole and things like that it, it's an, an algicide but everybody was stocking up on it because of claims somebody or other made um and it's a koi pond antifungal anti-algicide it's not an antibacterial or antiviral now some antifungals antibacterials antibiotics will kill viruses but that's like a happenstance thing that occurs and it's not going to treat a wide spectrum of anything um so i always make sure that i have <clears throat> a gram positive uh a gram positive medication on hand like erythromycin and the main reason is not to treat fish actually if they get a really bad infection from a a, a bite or a burn on a heater or they get smushed by a rock or you know something that's like blunt force trauma or tearing like from another fish that has teeth not just a little nip on their fins but if they actually get something in them with bacteria in it and it's nasty and it's like a, a swollen wound and you can see that it's red and spreading, then <laughs> I'll treat them with erythromycin because it's gram positive. So that means it treats bacteria that lives where air is still somewhat available. Gram negative generally means that it's bacteria that lives inside. So either in your mouth or in your digestive tract and it's either in um saliva or blood or in an organ lining and so that one's the more important one for treating fish and furin 2 uh metroplex is another one that has it oftentimes um and then there's mar uh what is it mar marcan or mars marcian 2 uh i think but you just you just need to look up what if it's gram negative or or gram positive and the gram positive stuff will also kill cyanobacteria. So the blue green algae that grows on tanks, it'll nuke that too. So that's the other reason I keep those two around. It's not really for treating infections. Really, the gram negative is the only one I use for infections in fish. Usually, if they've been wounded badly enough that they had a puncture wound that's infected them systemically with exterior bacteria, they're going to die or they're gonna fight it off on their own and they didn't need it. So what I usually do is I keep tannins around and I'll put them in like a 6.5, 6.0 pH tank and that will sanitize their slime coat. And it, the tannins naturally increase that slime coat. Also salt dips, that will increase their slime coat. The other thing, you can get various parasites, bacteria, and funguses to either die or live their life cycle faster by playing with the temperature and by looking online you can find the life cycle of say um well i mean ick is the classic one so you don't need ick x or whatnot you, you could buy it because it's not a bad chemical to treat various other parasites but it's it's not going to treat worms like hard hard to treat worms flat worms and it's not going to treat um you know, little, how do I say it? Little, little life forms that are not unicellular or uh, like, a, like it'll kill amoebas and things, but it won't kill like micro crustaceans, like, like literally crabs or lice or something like that. Like it wouldn't kill those. Um, oh, right on. Um, Lonnie, I hope if you placed an order, you got the 15% discount from the code history secret. 15 or history secret 10 if you've already used that code um, if you didn't get it and you just ordered it send them an email i almost guarantee you that they'll be like oh okay we'll tack it on and we'll refund your card um but yeah awesome man those pollen granules are really fun i really love those um let's see here but yeah the um yes uh Lady Diane says, I don't have any, but they're on my list. Black water for sure. I have all the botanicals when I get, I'll, I'll have all, uh, all the botanicals when I get them. I've had good success bringing down pH to five. Yeah. Alder cones for me are the thing that sinks the, P, the pH very quickly. Um, almost too quickly sometimes. 
And uh, if you don't want to sink the pH, but you want lots of tannins, then I've found that jackfruit and cinnamon are the best leaves that I've used. Uh, maple is good too, but it deteriorates quickly and leaves a lot of gunk in your tank. Now, if you want lots of leaves and mulm and, and substrate duff in there, then that's fine. Don't worry about it. Some people want to um, build that kind of an environment. Um, but yeah, we'll keep going over, um, the, the effects that the botanicals can have because they are downright full of, I mean, every vitamin and mineral you can imagine. Plus, I mean, they help the immune system. Jackfruit regulates, uh, insulin and so does cinnamon and so does cardamom and uh, at a rate that's. 30 to 40% better than the medications we have that we've given fish like insulin like, or not insulin itself, but the insulin building uh, or regulating medications. So obviously nothing's going to stop insulin itself. That's what you need, but the, the medications that trigger that. So yeah. Uh, hey Terry, what's going on? Want to see something cool? Um, let's see here. Uh, all right, let's see. Yes, T, Ru Rubo Rubios or Robos T is another good one. Uh, I'm going to go because I don't want to tromp on other people's time any more than I already have. But um, yeah, we'll be making uh, more videos on the botanicals. I'll try to just edit, get right to the good stuff of what we find in a microscope. Because I've found over 40 species in my tanks looking under that microscope. It just takes a while and maybe live wasn't the best idea. But in any case, I hope you guys are doing really well uh, and having a great night. And thank you for coming out. Thank you, Super Chatters, Lurkers, um, Mods, Admins, Mary, Rock. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to everybody later. And... Uh, I hope everybody has a good night. I'm really hot after being in that fish room. So I'm going to go outside where it's literally sleeting. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see people in the chats. And I'll have a new video out tomorrow or the next day uh, that I've been working on. So, all right, guys, have a good one. And thank you so much for your support. Lurkers, replay crew, everybody, you guys rock. You make this channel possible, and if you guys have any ideas for things you want to see on the channel, let me know. Uh, I'm always for also reinvesting in, you know, new doodads and, and do mahickeys for <laughs> the channel, like the microscope and things. Um, if, if I can afford it or if I can find a hookup on it, which sometimes I can do just because there's 25,000 of you now, um, I will do it. And... Uh, then we can learn something a different way. All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.